When you enter the theatre to come and see the encounter, you will see that there is nothing on stage. Well, not quite true. There's a table, there's microphones, there's loads of water bottles. I stand up and I start to tell you a story. You might go on that what we would call an imaginative journey. Everything about the show is designed to stimulate the imagination. And so everything that we do is about trying to say, let go even further, open yourself up to all the things that you can imagine and that you can create. The audience is kind of the artist in some way. And the head is really interesting because on one level it's a technical tool, but then it becomes other things in the production. So when Simon's speaking to this head, because it's the only other sort of thing on the stage resembling a person, it's, it's, it's a quite an interesting object because it's like a silent person. Um, and because we're hearing voices um, that are possibly coming from that head, then it animates that head in a very interesting way. One of the things quite early on I said was it's all very well doing a show set in the Amazon rainforest using binaural sound, but I don't really have any binaural recordings of the Amazon rainforest. A year later I find myself with Simon on a very small boat heading into the Amazon with a binaural head. And so we recorded loads of the show in, in the Amazon rainforest, carrying this huge heavy binaural head around, around the forest and doing various setups in the middle of the night. We think of the imagination as bringing to life something that doesn't exist. What is extraordinary is that memory and imagination are actually the same biochemical process in the brain. You can't remember without imagining, but you can't imagine without remembering. If the remembering is about what has happened in the past and the imagination is the future, what kind of future are we creating? if the imagination itself is a creative act.